and we're going we're on the high now <laughs> and you know what they're calling it the sweet repeat <laughs> and it is very sweet i've never seen so much emotion even compared to last year it just seems like a whole different feeling and they love it you know we're by mixed field i just saw a plane land here Perhaps they're bringing in the Chicago Bulls that way because last year was kind of, it was kind of a mess. But this year, I think the crowd's a little bit smaller, a little better organized. Uh, I think Chicago's had uh, a, a much easier time of organizing this than they did last year because they've got a whole year's practice. Right. Well, well, of course, last year was at noon, too. So a lot of people will probably be late of arriving here. And the Bulls last year barely made it here till yeah. afternoon anyway. So maybe they figured it out, you know, Chicago fans. But in the meantime, let's see what's happening down in the park with Chuck Gowdy. Chuck? Hi, Diane. Tim, Jim, boy, talk about being one in a million, huh? or maybe one in a quarter million this day in any case. Uh, there have been a lot of changes in this uh, this year's rally. Some of them, thankfully, the security much tighter and much better organized out here this year. This crowd, this crowd starts day it was so I, you know you guys have been through this before but chicago stadium was my first time being at the finals when they won well of course la was the first time but just to look around you know you're there for years and years and years watching and just to see so much emotion poured out because it finally happened here of course we all know that a Chicago team hasn't won a championship here since 63. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of emotion to build up. I think the emotion was built up because of what happened at the beginning of the season, you know, with Michael uh, not going to the White House and telling everyone he wanted to be with his family and then finding out later on there was a little golf involved and then there was that gambling situation and the book came out uh, with the Jordan rules. And um, so I think that created a lot of turmoil that they had to live through. Plus the fact of the matter is they had to play 82 regular season games as the world champions. Now this was a season that started out with a loss to Philadelphia on November 1st when they got their championship rings, but it was a chase for a second championship that began in the most unlikeliest of cities, the city of Miami, Florida. For the Miami Heat, it was their first chance to be in the playoffs, but unfortunately, they would go down 3-0. The average margin of victory in this series was 18 points, but Michael Jordan scored 56 points in the final game of the series. However, Miami held tough. They only lost by four, 119 to 114. And then in the second series against the New York Knicks, it was rough. Xavier McDaniel and Horace Grant almost squaring off there. The X-Man was the X-Factor in this series. Xavier McDaniel would score 26 points in in the final game it was a series that would go seven contests michael jordan would score 37 points and scotty pippen would pick up 10 rebounds as the bulls would beat new york in game seven in chicago stadium by a count of 96 to 88 and then the bulls moved on to cleveland and against the cavaliers this was the team i thought would really to give them a tough battle. But the Cavaliers went down in six games, four games to two. The marshmallow factor at Richfield Coliseum, as one Chicago writer had called the uh, Cavaliers cream puffs. And so the fans responded, and so do did, did the Cavaliers. They played tough against the Bulls, who won game number six, 99 to 94. Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen led the way, each of them with 28 points to clinch the Eastern Conference Championship at Richfield Coliseum. And then finally, it would be against the Portland Trailblazers for the NBA championship. Portland, a team that some people thought would go down in four games to the Bulls, and Michael Jordan saying, hey, look, this first game performance by me is just something I can't believe. He scored 35 points in that first half of play in game number one, including six three-point shots. But unfortunately for the Bulls, and fortunately for the Portland Trailblazers, there was Clyde Drexler and Jerome Kersey. Drexler uh, would uh, match up very well with Michael Jordan. Scotty Pippen, though, he played a big, big force for the Bulls. He had been hassled all year long by the media. Some people thought that perhaps Scotty Pippen did not have the wherewithal to step up and play a big game, but he did prove that in game number six on Sunday. Game four, the Bulls uh, lost that one. Clyde Drexler was the big man for the Portland Trailblazers, as was uh, Jerome Kersey as well. Game five, Scottie Pippen came through. Michael Jordan started bagging the three-point shots. And then in game six, the bench came through. Bobby Hansen with a big three-point shot. B.J. Armstrong. But the man of the hour was Scottie Pippen. Came in in that fourth period while Michael Jordan sat down, and Pippen led the Bulls. He led four guys off the bench as they led the Chicago Bulls to their second straight NBA championship. In the final six minutes, it was Pippen and Michael Jordan who would bring them home. Michael
Michael with the strip and the slam. Between the two of them, they would score 19 points, all 19 of the last Bulls points in that final game as the Bulls win their second NBA championship, 97 to 93. So it was a pretty tumultuous season. And now the question, I guess, begs to be asked, uh, what's going to happen next year? Will there be a three-peatable? I think there's a very good chance, Jim, and the real the, it's a real delicate task that uh, befalls Jerry Krause now. You can't tamper too much. This team is young enough that they could defend the championship basically with the parts they have in place mm -hmm. right now. But Scott Williams came out of a very bad meeting last, yesterday with Phil Jackson and Krause, so his future's in doubt. Stacy King's future's in doubt. B.J., Craig Hodges. This is going to be a very... You talk about the season being tumultuous. Mm -hmm. I think the offseason will percolate a little, a little bit, too. Agreed. And I know things are percolating down in the crowd where Chuck Gowdy is standing by with Chicago's finest. Chuck? Yeah, Tim, they certainly are. Uh, this is a very spirited crowd, but interesting. You may uh, have the same observation that it, it doesn't seem to be nearly as hyped as it was last year, maybe because there aren't quite as many people out here, maybe because people have been through this before. As you know, however, after the disturbances following Sunday night's finals victory, the Chicago police were very concerned about providing an adequate level of security here today. The police department officially is saying they've got about 800 officers in and around Grant Park. I've got to tell you, I personally counted 100 officers just in the block of Columbus Drive that has been closed off for the Bulls motorcade to come in. There will be no parade this year, as you all know. All the activity will take place here on the stage. The police are saying they fear the biggest problem here is going to be from pickpockets. And that is always a problem whenever there's a gathering of shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder people here in Grant Park. But this crowd seems to be just partying and having a good time celebrating the Bulls' second victory. Tim? Well, well you know, Chuck, it's an old comedian who said nothing happens till 11.30, and the lunch bunch is here, and 11.30 is just about to come up. So I think they'll be tuned, and the crowd is starting to grow already. People in the trees are out back. <laughs> so uh, they're ready for the party. You know, one of the things you were talking about, uh, the team changing next year. I think, though, that Bulls fans probably would put a lot of pressure on management to make sure they can compete against teams like New York, which is a very exciting team this year, and it'll be very exciting next year, too. Well, the excitement's going to be hard to top from Sunday night at the stadium. That was an amazing game. Down by 15 points, the bench helped the Bulls get back in the game. Then Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan helped the Bulls win the game. Let's look back and listen and watch the beginning of one of the most exciting celebrations in Chicago sports history. Jump ball with Horace Grant. The Portland Trailblazers and Coach Rick Adelman felt they'd been robbed by the officiating, but every time the losing team's going to feel that way. The jump ball that ensued led to the ball going back to the Bulls, and initially the call says Portland's way. <laughs> That's going to happen. I mean, the NBA officials, they are human as well, and they've got probably the best officials in sport. Well, it's the toughest game in the world to call, and all the players ask for is consistency. It's not always there. Uh, I would have to say the officiating went both ways in that series, but Michael Jordan went only one way, and that was up. You know, in that fourth period, with Portland leading by 15 points, you had the feeling, though, that if the Bulls could get within seven or six points with about five minutes left, that they could win this ball game. Because, and I know it's a cliche, but it's an apt cliche in sport, momentum. I mean, you could just see the momentum drain from Portland and see it shift to the side of the Bulls. And then here it was, folks. Eruption time in Chicago. Look at Michael. He's like a kid at Christmas. It's almost like when he made that shot May 7, 1989 against Cleveland. <laughs> scene that I've ever been involved with and uh, Jim Diane uh, and I will all say this uh, it was a real murderous situation to work but it was absolute heaven for everybody <laughs> for else you. involved <laughs> well yeah, they're hanging from the treetops here at uh, Grant Park as the rally continues for repeatable here on channel 7 stay with us Ooh, 
truly wonderful day for a big party in the park, huh? It must be 15 degrees cooler than it was last year. I remember <laughs> roasting up here. Yeah. I got a sweater on because I wanted to feel the heat. I wanted to get into that fever pitch. But it is absolutely perfect, and it's just a perfect way for Chicago to bring in uh, the greatest celebration of all time. We got a nice breeze coming in <laughs> off the lake, too, so that, that certainly helps. You know, I'll tell you, the party in the stadium the other night, I didn't think they could ever top that in the world. But that was a party of all parties. It was like the Bulls turned the basketball court into a giant dance floor. It was literally a burst of relief for Bulls fans who've enjoyed a season of victories they came to expect. And then a roller coaster of emotion during the playoffs, which featured some scary defeats. So they screamed for their Bulls to make a curtain call. After all, it's the first time a Chicago sports team has won a title at home since the 63 Bears. Steve Shanwald isn't marketing director for nothing. He said, give them some Bulls. contribute and, and you go through seven, eight months together and, and the season is so long, yeah. but when you can come out, it just makes it all, all worthwhile. The Bulls, too, were relieved. At one point, they were beginning to believe their emotion had been drained, but that feeling hit so hard that even Michael Jordan had to dance a jig. I just want to savor this one. We'll all start thinking about that tomorrow. The greatest fans in the world in this beautiful Jimmy and Diane. This is beautiful. <laughs> Could you believe that Michael actually thanked Chicago for uh, drafting him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Diane, you know, Jerry Krause was just saying, I want to savor this now, and then we'll worry about it tomorrow. He didn't lie, because at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, he was already thinking <laughs> yep. about the next season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's see what the fans are thinking about with Chuck Gowdy. Chuck? Diane, you know, I am always amazed at the emotion and devotion to Chicago <laughs> championship sports teams. Look at what Mike Marshall here took, what, three weeks to paint? Oh, about... <laughs> yeah, three weeks, about right? three weeks okay, okay we give it to you. this is an oil painting if you can't see right. why did you spend three weeks of your time painting this picture uh, because i love well, for one thing i love to paint i love Amari, and uh, michael jordan is one of my uh role models now, this is unfinished though right what does it need <laughs> It don't need anything but Michael to sign it. Well, that's what I was getting. Okay, you're trying to get Jordan to sign yeah. this thing. I had to make it even more valuable. Right? <laughs> exactly. Okay, Mark Marshall, one of a kind, although I did see one other painting down there. You must have some competition. Uh, yes, but it's not, it's not close to this. Yeah, no, I'd not agree close. with that. At least I, I'd agree with it in front of him. Okay, back up to you guys. Chuck, even Michelangelo had competition. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think there was There's Raphael one guy down here has got a good painting. <laughs> he brings that one every year. <laughs> but we'll be right back with more of the celebration from Grant Park. Thank you. Lunchtime in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, but this is a lunchtime no, like no other lunchtime. And the music starting and the party. Yeah, we a, a few of the Bulls are already backstage, I'm told, and uh, so we're just now starting to get some momentum here to get uh, to get the uh, the crowd going when the people appear up on stage. Jerry Kraus, that was a great bit with you guys. Uh, you know, having that live vantage point right by the dance floor was really sensational. And, and you know, as we were bringing them over. I motioned over to our uh, support people, get three chairs. Jerry's going to have to sit down. It was like last year in the locker room in Los Angeles. He was Jerry was home. like hyperventilating. I said, Jerry, we need to sit down, brother. You know, you Jerry's not the only one who needed to sit down. I, I had to get on a chair to interview Scott Williams and Cartwright. I mean, these guys are way up there, man. I was getting arm weary. So let's sit them all down to our level. But it's really, I thought that was incredible that Jerry Krause mm -hmm. says, oh, I just want to enjoy this now because 8 o'clock yesterday morning, they were already in meetings, already talking about the future. And some would think that would be a little cold. I mean, why don't you just get through the party today, and then we can always worry about next year. But, well, you know, 
Time waits for no one in the NBA as Mayor Daly arrives here uh, to be part of the celebration. You know, we were talking about the, the players that are going to stay, the players that are obviously Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant are just about untouchable. Uh, yeah, Pippen, and then there's this Pippen rumor about Pippen being traded for Akeem right. Olajuwon, which that is not going to happen. I think that... Uh, Can you imagine Akeem coming and refusing to go into the game? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, in Akeem's situation, uh, the problem I have when there's circulation in his legs, you know, he was wearing surgical hose uh, two years ago and last year, and uh, the, the problem with his legs, so he might be damaged goods. Besides, Pippen for Olajuwon is not a straight-up trade. That's not an even trade as far no. as I'm concerned. And I think they do, do need Scottie Pippen because when Michael Jordan retires, and I'm going to you right now i think michael jordan will play next year and the year after that maybe and then say sayonara and wow. see you later because he has played 10 or 11 seasons in eight already but what do you think that might mean for the new stadium i mean the new stadium without michael would be i don't know kind of a palace without it's a king it's I mean, a whole new ball game that's for sure and uh, they're not going to have the same kind of frenzy and uh, demand for tickets without michael that's true i mean you know Everybody's got a, a reserve gas tank, and Michael perhaps has a little more than most of us mere mortals, but, uh, I mean, he only has so much left, and it's only going to be a, a matter of time before he has to uh, before he has to, to retire and say, that's it, I'm going to go play golf. All right, uh, look at that live shot from our Chopper 7 way up above Grant Field. Let's go now to uh, Chuck Gowdy, who is down in the midst of that throng. Chuck? Well, or at least as close to the midst as I can get. The security this year is keeping reporters out from the middle of the crowd. The cameras tend to turn things up but we found these three fellows from Hammond Indiana graduated from high school this year but they must not have learned much because they showed up here 24 hours ago right guys right. what have you been doing for the last day we've been waiting uh, for the Bulls we've been playing football stuff like that and in the back and drinking a few beers but uh our main reason for coming out is not only for the Bears, but all that looting that went on last the night before. It's not a Bulls fan, you know. It's not a true Bulls fan. Wait a minute, how old are you guys? I'll be I'll be 26 years old. I'm, I'm 18. Okay, well you're the only one drinking beer though, right? Yeah. Okay, not, all right. Well, that's good to hear. This fellow's put uh, number 23. Uh, looks like tattooed on his chest here. I don't know that you can see it or not. And I've got to tell you that there are a lot of signs being carried around here. Michael Jordan for president. I'm not sure Ross Perot's got anything to worry about, but he'd probably get a few votes out of this crowd. Jordan's got it in the bag. If he runs for president, <laughs> we love Jordan. Okay, guys, along with everybody else here, thanks very much. We'll toss it back upstairs. No, Chuck, you can't have a president who plays golf 36 <laughs> holes. I mean, Bush plays a lot of golf, but not that much. Well, I do and know Michael wouldn't want golf. the yeah, vice president <laughs> plays a lot Michael of golf. Michael wouldn't want the job, believe me. <laughs> Maybe that's what's behind that White House thing. Just kidding. <laughs> we'll be right back with a repeatable celebration. Stay with us. Stadium too. <laughs> well, and as I'm sure you guys have read, uh, almost every wedding in Chicago now is starting off with that introduction, so the Bulls song, as they call it. That's great. You know what that real music <laughs> is, Jr. I've mm. never, I've never been clued in on that. I think we're gonna have to check that out. I, I just, I just like, you know, when you hear that music, you know it's time for the Bulls. Well, it is time for the Bulls right now, and Diane was mentioning a little earlier, it is starting to definitely fill up right now, uh, and I think it's because we're starting a little earlier than we did last year. Well, only you guys could get out of work at 10 o'clock and, you know, come to the park. Well, what a lot about of people you? have to... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Diane goes on at 5 o'clock. 11 o'clock, yeah. No, They're filling is, it up. It is really starting to fill up now, and uh, we could easily top last year's uh, crowd, which was enormous. And, of course, you're not going to get turnstiles here, so you're not going to get an accurate count, mm -hmm. but uh, we could get up around four or 500,000 people, maybe. Oh, I'm what sure. do you think? Probably. Yeah. You know what's really neat, too? They're, they're well-behaved. I mean, I, I don't see anybody getting out of hand. I really didn't see too many people getting out of hand last year, but considering what happened after the Bulls won the championship, uh, this is really nice to see everybody behaving themselves and having a good time. Oh, it's wonderful. Let's ratchet it down. Maybe 200,000. I mean, who knows? <laughs> Somebody knows. I think there were, the record was the Pope. Well, plus, I think the police will always tell you that if you get people here and everything doesn't start right away, this way they have a little chance to settle in. There's no pushing and shoving, and then everything thing can start and then that way you, you know you you set the stage for just like at the stadium the other night the police were telling me that uh, they took over right away they didn't want to seem like the one in LA so they lined the court and they told people you're gonna see if you stay in your seats don't jump out or you will get out of the stadium you'll miss everything I thought security at the stadium was was spectacular. They really did keep uh, a good, I mean, that could have turned mm -hmm. into a rough scene, but I think everybody was just so into the celebration, mm -hmm. nobody was gonna get ugly. And uh, nobody's ugly with you, right, Chuck Gowdy? <laughs> well, no, they don't have the right to, I'll tell you, because with all these police here, how could anybody get ugly? 
This is a city of politics and protocol, as you know. And take a look at this. Here's the seating before everybody's sitting here and blocking the signs. Very interesting the way they've uh, constructed the seating arrangement. Michael Jordan's got the front row seat, which you'd expect. But on the other side of the aisle, the front row seat goes to Johnny Red Kerr, the Bulls broadcaster. Next to him is Kathy Osterman, who's in charge of this event, the head of the mayor's office of special events. Next to her is the coach, Phil Jackson. He doesn't even get the aisle seat. And next to them, Mayor Daly. I think he may want to ask Kathy Osterman about next year's seating arrangement, Tim. <laughs> you know why Johnny Red Kerr gets the seat that he gets? Because yeah, well, he has to keep getting up and down. Yeah. Well, There's Kathy now. That could be it. Yeah, I don't think anybody's too concerned about the pecking order right now, just yeah. so we're all part of the fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of fun is indeed expected. Uh, I, you know, you know, a lot of people want to know, is this bigger than the, you know, everybody has to quantify something. Is this bigger than the Bears would be? I no. mean, you know, it's it's apples and oranges, but I really think that it, you can say with a great deal of conviction that was Jerry Reinsdorf and Bobby Hansen confer backstage that the Bulls have definitely created a niche of their own. I mean, uh, Bears, Bulls, Cubs, Sox, I mean, the Bulls have totally captured this town. I think, though, that Jerry Reinsdorf hit it right on the head. He said even if the Bears were 8-8, eight and eight, I mean, and the Bulls were world champions, the Bears are still going to get a lion's share of the coverage because they are the Bears and they have the tradition. They've been here for 75 years. But uh, that may change. I mean, if the, if the Bulls can win two or three more championships and the Bears stay down in the cellar in the, in the dumpster, uh, I can guarantee it probably, probably would change. Of course, Michael Jordan's a big reason, probably the biggest reason why the Bulls are, are front page. Well, it is interesting that the, the Super Bowl, when the Bulls won in New Orleans, the Bears won, we always do that. <laughs> yeah. when the Bears won in New Orleans did about a 15 to 20 percent larger audience but it was on a Sunday and it was totally a, a, a city well of course the Bears the Bulls run Sunday night as well so but there aren't as many games in football and yeah. it's one of those things that everybody's just sort of in Chicago it's like a Bears town you right. know it's a, a it, I, rough... think it's, I think it's the tradition too sure. I mean Chicago's the city of big shoulders you know you got these big bad Bears I mean <laughs> basketball is so balletic Michael Jordan is such an artiste you know I mean I think Chicago has, has gotten used to that mm -hmm. but they're not as used to it as they are of the big bad monsters of the Midway well and look at look at hockey if hockey ever made it to uh, free television, I think the Hawks will get a lot of respect, too. The Bears hit, you know, there's a lot of hitting, and people right. people want that kind of thing. It's, it's a tough sport, mm -hmm. and that's just what Chicago is all about. So I think the Bulls have a lot of fans here around the world, as a matter of fact, but uh, but the Bears will always be first. Well, well, the Bulls are definitely America's basketball team right now. The Knicks didn't sell out any games this year in New York <laughs> except for the Bulls. Did you see the banners flying over? Whoa. Uh-oh. Oh, Whoa, well. <laughs> statement there huh? back to the mounted police huh? <laughs> nobody's looking up there anyway yeah well but, but some people were looking at television you know what I noticed about Portland which is pretty funny it was such a college atmosphere I've never seen so many people bring signs to a game mm -hmm. out of mm -hmm. college in my life they had signs people just like brought them in in droves here now the Bulls you know they pass them out at the door but these people were very creative they wrote things you look around at a you know at a slow moment in the game and you had to laugh at some mm -hmm. of the signs they had it was pretty funny well Bobby Hansen said after the game a celebration was like going back to high school yeah and uh, there was that exuberance that uh, you don't feel unless you're very young or very successful as speaking of Bobby Hansen there he is backstage <laughs> and JR you know Bobby wants to just gobble up oh. every bit of this because a year ago he was in Sacramento right. he just can't even believe <laughs> that he's here and a vital part of this too. if the security uh, services would let him he'd go out into the crowd right now and go and shake everybody's hand I bet you would and uh, and he'd probably uh, get a great well obviously he'd get a great reception uh, Stacy King said an interesting thing to me and so did Scott Williams yesterday. They said the reason it took Bobby Hansen so long to click is the Bulls have a very difficult system to learn. Right. You talk about the Tex winner triple post and uh, Johnny Box defense and all these kinds. It's hard for a guy to come in from another team and feel comfortable right away. And Bobby started clicking in the playoffs primarily because he was starting to feel comfortable. I'll get back to the Hansen thing in just a second, but Chuck Gowdy is busy downstairs. Chuck? Yeah. Well, this may be the power of television or just the luck of our coverage, but take a look what's happening on stage right now, guys. Kathy Osterman, the woman in the hat, in charge of the mayor's office of special events, now rearranging the seating here. Let's see, what, what are they doing up there? Well, now Jerry Reinsdorf's got a better seat. So does Jerry Kraus. And the mayor, it looks like the mayor is uh, being pushed off to the side a little bit more, but uh, that's got to say something about the uh, hierarchy in this city, right? Uh, I think
think you're making a big deal out of nothing. Well, Sean. we always do that, don't we? <laughs> you know, you accused us of that for right years. <laughs> Mike with Jordan in that number nine jersey. That's uh, the USA basketball I team. I can't for the believe Olympics. they wouldn't let him wear 23 in the Olympics. Well, well, no, you know what the story is behind that? Yeah, I'd like he, to know. Um, he didn't want to wear 23. He said he wore nine in the, in the last oh, Olympics. I see. So he wanted to wear uh, nine this time as a, just a measure of good luck. But he could have had 23 if he wanted it. I talked to Michael after the game and uh, Sunday, and I said, you know, you're going to be exhausted because you only – I think this weekend they got to go to San Diego. He said, right. don't worry. I'm not going to put out as much energy as you think in that Olympic thing. I don't, I don't think I don't think he's going to get too worked up. Can well, we trust all, him? <laughs> and all the talk about him playing golf and everything, I think that may have pumped him up even more in that last game in Portland. That's all everybody asked him about, and he looked at the crowd sort of said, watch this. <laughs> he I'll tell you crazy. what, though, if that heel was hurting him as bad as it was uh, last Sunday uh, in the championship game uh, this Sunday in game number six, uh, he's got to be one extraordinary person to play through that kind of pain. You know, we were talking about Bobby Hansen for just a second. You know, when he came here from Sacramento for Dennis Hobson, um, he he went to, to with the Bulls to Boston and immediately played and immediately showed what he could do, and then he sat on the bench for the rest of the way. He never, ever lost his confidence. I used to talk with him maybe every third or fourth game or so. He never lost his confidence. He said, I'm just going to be ready. I'm going to be ready when they call on me. And I'm gonna, just like a gunfighter out of the West, he was ready when they called his number. Well, it was amazing, and he could hit those three-pointers uh, really kind of on command. As soon as he got in the game, almost his first shot, he drained as the mayor talks to Jerry Reinsdorf. He's talking about that chair situation. Well, I don't know. <laughs> either the chair or the stadium situation. <laughs> and Jerry Reinsdorf uh, gets what he wants. I mean, he got Comiskey Park. Mm -hmm. Now he's getting the new stadium out on the west side. And Mike McCaskey, owner of the Bears, would love to have Jerry Reinsdorf's clout pull or whatever it is that's getting Reinsdorf the stadia and not uh, McCaskey. The, well, Bears, as far as the Bears are going to be a team without a home. Yeah, as far as the Bulls uh, arena is concerned, is an, an old line from Al Davis, just win, baby. <laughs> and that's exactly what the Bulls have been doing the last couple of years. Because, Tim, I think you'd probably agree with me. If the Bulls were not winning, there would be no stadium. That's true, too. Well, I hope that uh, Chicago takes a lesson from a place like Cleveland. You know, when we were there for the Bulls in Cleveland. And one thing, they're moving their stadium back to the city from the suburbs because they learned that you can't try to move a team to the suburbs and think that suddenly you can, I guess, to keep the fans that you have if they have no access and they became suburban. So now they have to move them back to the city from the suburbs. That's and one of that's Chicago's not an greatest stadium. strengths. That's one of Chicago's greatest strengths that all the teams are downtown. They come in from all over the area. The Cubs, the Sox, the Bulls, the Bears, the Hawks all play downtown and it draws the entire area together. And I really think that downtown stadium is the best way to go for whatever team is involved as we see the fans standing up on top of the cars it should be minutes away now that, yeah. the, that we hear the national anthem and the celebration officially begins but maybe we have to assume that the bulls are being tied up by the crowd as they were a year ago huh? well they said that they were going to bring them in uh, uh, secretly this summer uh, instead of having a parade of cars coming down the yeah Columbus but as you know drive. there's no easy way to get in here unless you walk like we did that's true <laughs> i thought they would and i don't see michael walk jordan walk walking in this crowd no, not at all <laughs> i thought that they would bring them up uh, uh, Jackson uh, Jackson uh, Drive there and um, but there's no easy way in here with the crowd all around and I, I, I'm really wondering what this secret plan is and how it's going to unfold because really we walked to, we walked through the crowd and that was uh, the, the easiest and only way to go as you see a lot of people have not made their way into the park here yet because they're waiting for what would probably be a motorcade or some sort but we know it's a double-decker bus and they're waiting there just to get a glimpse because once you're in the park and you're back behind the reserve seating area, you, if you don't have binoculars, you're not going to see uh, anything really close up. They've got the street pretty well clear uh, from uh, from the Spaghetti Bowl, from uh, the Dan Ryan on in. So I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. Uh -huh. uh, but getting them through that crowd now, you know, people don't want to move. They see the Bulls, they're going to go crazy. <laughs> well, obviously, Bobby Hansen walked over here, got, got here some kind of way on his own because he is back there mm -hmm. talking with the mayor and uh, Jerry Reinsdorf. And... Uh, you know, Jerry Reinsdorf is an interesting case in point. I mean, here's a guy that has brought Chicago a couple of champ well, he's brought them two world basketball championships, a division championship with the White Sox, and still not trusted, not really liked too much. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because uh, uh, he's a cold-hearted businessman. I think that's yeah. why it is. I mean, he, uh, he's a tough, tough guy. Maybe he's not flamboyant like George Steinbrenner or Al Davis, Davis some of the something. maverick owners that you have in professional sports. Um, but I don't think any owner really is. That's the life. point, you know? Jim. Can you think of one sports owner that's right. beloved? I mean, there have been 
Well, you've got to make decisions that aren't going to be very popular. And when you have a place like Chicago where people are very sensitive about their players, uh, look look at the Bears when they started to uh, get older and they started to retire and, and they pretty much knew their careers were over. People were still touchy. Let him play until, you know, yeah. he's in the... I'll tell you, he has pushed all the right buttons. I'm talking about Jerry Reinsdorf. When he made the coaching change from Doug Collins to Phil Jackson, oh, there was an upper around this city that was... Because people thought that Doug had got him so close, but yeah. Reinsdorf, Jerry Reinsdorf and Jerry Krause were able to see that in order to get to the next level, and this is no knock on Doug Collins, because I love Doug Collins. I think Doug Collins is one of the three greatest basketball minds on the planet. But he knew that Phil Jackson had the coolness, the calmness, and he also had perhaps that scholarly attitude to take this team the next step, which he did. It only took him one year. I mean, he got the game seven against Detroit three years ago, and then last year they won the championship, and this year they won the championship. So uh, they've really pushed the right buttons and made the right moves to get you this team the you, title. You can't argue with two world titles in a row. I, uh, My personal feeling is I think Doug Collins might have gotten him to the titles too because I think Michael Jordan is the constant in all of this, and Michael Jordan was destined to be a championship player. But but that's only my opinion. Right, and I say, right. Jim, you cannot argue with the results. Right. Now, Phil Jackson is another interesting point here. Phil Jackson has changed. This year, he was very aloof. He had no press conferences after the game, after they won the championship. He went up to the podium, did his thing for everybody, and then disappeared. Yesterday, he was absolutely rude to the media. I mean, not that, you know, we're not looking for yeah, a handout yeah. here, except that if you're world champions, you'd think he'd be a little bit gracious and relaxed. He was very tense and put offish, and I'm wondering how he's going to behave next year as two-time champion. He's getting to be very tough to deal with. Perhaps I think that he was like that after that meeting that you saw Scott Williams come out of. I mean, I figure... He knew that after you saw Scott Williams that you were going to ask him those questions about the makeup of this that's, basketball that's team. That's a good point, but he was that way before the meeting, too. He was that way. Matter of fact, we were out on the court talking to the players, and he kicked us out. He just, anyway, did, he did not do it in a nice way either. Yeah. He whistled at uh, at some of one of our competitors, and the whistle was so piercing, Bobby Hansen went <laughs> like this. <laughs> ah, whoa, what did we do? Bust well, he, it again. Bust that, it again. He's, he's that type of guy, though, because I remember when we were in New York um, uh, earlier in the season, and Spike Lee and a few other came by to you know see Michael Jordan and their friends with him and everything and Phil Jackson came outside the locker room and and he was talking to everybody he said just media in here and, and make sure Spike Lee doesn't get in because he's not a part of the media well, even in Portland remember uh, the day of the game and the, uh, after the shoot arounds mm -hmm. Phil said we're not we're not gonna have interviews and most people had to get stories on the air that day before the game started Phil's right. tough it was yeah. tough and he's going to get tougher, I have a feeling. Well, hey, but nobody's tough tougher than Chuck yeah. County, though, right? All right, take it away, Chuck. Well, you know, the Bulls uh, during the regular season are very conscious of, of uh, providing some special seating for people with disabilities, and the city has tried to do the same thing here today. Up above the crowd, they have provided some special seating for folks in wheelchairs, for people with other disabilities, provided ID at the front door, and, and they allowed these people to come in and really have a bird's-eye view of the stage here. Uh, Sheila Tucker is uh, the head of the mayor, or the deputy I'm, head, no, right? No, I am the public information officer okay. right. well, for the mayor's good. office for people us. with disabilities was, was this in place last year um i believe we did have a, a section for persons with disabilities and what, what's the what's the purpose of this up here today well the purpose is to make chicago the most accessible city in the nation since this is a very outstanding occasion we want to make sure that equal access is provided to all persons right. with disabilities you know what they're about to see here in a minute the Bulls. Let's take it back up. Yeah, you're right, Chuck. The Bulls are pulling into our picture right now. <laughs> there goes the crowd. The the, uh, the big old bus carrying the Bulls. Now, what happened to Bobby Hanson? How come he missed? Did he miss the bus? Or he just, so he wanted to get here early. He probably spent the night here with the fans last night just to make sure he had a seat up there. <laughs> he was in that crowd at 6 o'clock in the morning. That he wants through. to make sure that he's going to get his ring. I, I, thought, on chair. <laughs> I thought Bobby Hanson had the line of the playoffs when we asked him why, you know, all of a sudden now he's the people's choice and everybody loves him. He said he's the Ross Perot of, of the NBA. The less he <laughs> does and the less he says the more people like him i thought that was a great line you know, i said bobby did you rehearse that he says no it just kind of popped into my head right there i remember scotty pippen when he first came to chicago and uh, i had done an interview with him and he said the most exciting thing about playing for chicago was he said i heard that when the players get introduced they have their own spotlight <laughs> scotty said that scotty said that scotty's a homeboy <laughs> now, he? he's a home <laughs> now he's got his commercials and everything oh yeah else. he gets got real uh, mature in a hurry. <laughs> well, you know, and, and uh, as we watched uh, them come down, it's got to be a difficult situation for Scottie Pippen being 1A 
Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. Michael Jordan is so king, and obviously Scotty is vital to this club. People say he's, in a way, the most valuable player because when he's on, the Bulls can't lose. Right. But it's got to be tough to play in Michael Jordan's shadow. It's I, great, but it's also tough. I think you realize that, and what helped that relationship, because they have a very good relationship, is that Michael helped Scotty with his endorsements. Mm -hmm. Michael helped Scotty get that Nike endorsement that won all by himself. Uh, and, and Michael has helped Scotty get other endorsements and has really helped him shape uh, his career and helped to shape uh, his talent because Scotty, you know, people may disagree with me about this. Michael Jordan is an extraordinary athlete, but he, he what he does is he, he provides you with great athletic talent and a great superior mind. Scotty, I think, is a better athlete than Michael. He's got better tools. And the day that Scotty Pippen puts it all together, mentally and physically, you are going to see one heck of a performance. Well, plus Michael is Mr. Personality. Well, we're going to see one heck of a performance starting just about now. The music's starting. The crowd is getting into it. They realize the Bulls are right around the corner. Queen, Let's stop and listen to some of this. Waving your banner all the place. We will, we will rock you. Sing We will, we will rock you. Buddy, you're an old man, poor man, pleading with your eyes, gonna make you zombie someday. You got mud on your face, big disgrace. Somebody better put your bag into your place. behind Phil Jackson with the trophy. There's, Jim There's the Bulls' entourage backstage. Tex Winter, the innovator of the triple post offense. Jim Stack, who provides a great scouting for the Chicago Bulls, along with Jim Clemens on the road all year long. Oh, man, they feel it now. Like a rock concert. Yep, that's exactly right. bucks a year. <laughs> and he's going to get a little over two million next year. The yeah. Bulls keep him. There's, there's Michael. There's the man. There's the man. Horace, Horace. Grant, Scott Williams, Will Perdue. He didn't see a lot of playing time in the Western Conference Series. Scott Williams, uh, B.J. Armstrong. There's Scotty Pippen, John Paxson, Cliff Le Good news. Cliff Levingston. my kids were here. You realize that maybe they are and I don't know it. The entire city of Portland <laughs> would be represented right here in the park. <laughs> That's so true. It's, it's pretty close to the truth. Portland's what, less than 400,000 sure. people? No city limits. Wow. You think about next year too, uh, as I do my analysis, uh, I don't think Portland's going to make it next year for the Western Conference Finals. I think it's, I'm going to go on record right now. San Antonio will represent the West next year. The Bulls start to come on the stage with their uh, wives and girlfriends, and the crowds feed them. And it's just one big love in. Up there with the video camera. Last 
last year Scott Williams uh, brought his video camera to record the crowd looking back at them. I'm glad we have a tape of it. Season 15 and 7 in the playoffs. The world champion Chicago Bulls. This is my favorite stadium song. <laughs> was out on the street is beginning to pour in here. And now, Tim, it's starting to look like poke cake. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. That lunchtime crowd is coming over from all these office buildings. I'll tell you what, even though I'm up here in the shirt and tie, I wouldn't be down there in the shirt and tie today. <laughs> the people way in the back, it's, it's hard to imagine what it must look like. And I can see why these people would get here at 6 o'clock in the morning if they really want to be part of it. It's, it's kind of tough if you're not right down front. but. I mean, even even if you're in Evanston right now, you got to be feeling the vibrations. Yep. It's really a very powerful, powerful experience. Now, you know this is a special day for fans, but imagine being the players. You walk out today, and this is what you face. Well, I asked Michael about that after the game. He was kind of holding court, and people were coming in and kissing his ring after the game in the locker room as well as he should, I guess. I said, does this ever get old for you? He says, no, man. Everyone is up at a higher level. And, and I said, what about you when you're out in front of the people at Grand Park? He says, man, that's the greatest of all. You just see that sea of people. And, and, and it just has to, over, even a, a, a personality bigger than life than Michael has to be affected by it. This is what he works for. I mean, arguably, I mean, this guy is one of the hardest workers in all of sport. I mean, he pumps iron every day, exercises aerobically every day. Even on game days, this guy does that kind of work. Well, that's why he's able to play through that kind of pain that you were talking about, Jim. There's the Lovables backstage as they get ready to salute the crowd and cheer Chicago on. Now, that's a tough job, too. Those those young women don't get paid, do they? And they audition for, yeah, they, well, a minimal fee of, they like, get, 15, uh, 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah. $15 a game. And they have to audition for every game. For every game. For every game. Well, there's like 25 Knock of them. down for every game. There's 25 of them, and they choose wow. 16 Competition. for each game. Oh, man, that's worse than the Bears. <laughs> worse than the Bulls. Woo, that oh, uh, is cold. At, at least if you yeah. make the Bulls, if you get past the 52-game limit, you know yeah. you're in for the season. That's right. That's cold. And there they go. They're hot. I'm sorry, not the 52nd game, the 52nd day of the season. Song, I have to put my laptop computer down. <laughs> It's all become part of Chicago lore. The music, Diane, you talk about that, the, the songs that you particularly like. Once you go to the stadium, it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I have a country bumpkin brother who lives up in Wisconsin, and he's the most wonderful, unaffected guy in the world, and I brought him down to his first Bulls game, and he almost wet his pants. It was so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, I love you. It was great to have you down here. Gary Gritter's rock and roll. Okay, now. <laughs> 
you got it. He knows him, knows. Hey, <laughs> top 40, baby. Top 40. That and the blues. <laughs> yeah, man, when I was playing music, it was James Brown and it was the Supreme. But it has an identity all its own now, once the Bulls have gotten a hold of it, it's all the Bulls songs. You know, I've been to many of the arenas around the NBA, and they play this song there, and I'm telling them, not hey, the same. Please, I know. Cut that out. Stop copying. Remember Cleveland? We were like, wait, wait. <laughs> well, let's see if it comes on as strong in the new building, because a lot of the magic has to do with that great old building well, on the Well, since Chicago, Street. people have big mouths. They can yell here about it. You can even hear them in Portland. But you know in, the in acoustics. Place There's ten of them in the stadium, and they're louder than the people that live there. But the acoustics in the stadium are really yeah. ear-splitting. Uh, I've been assured by Steve Schoenwald that they have talked to that to the architects and that they are going to make sure that the new Chicago stadium is just as loud as the old Chicago stadium. Well, it's pretty loud out here, too. Let's listen. to let the show begin. Uh-oh. Benny the Bull <laughs> on stage. No, not there. There. Oh, Benny already left. He gave Kathy Osterman a big... Welcome to the 1992 championship rally for the Chicago Bulls! So let's get on. Let's give another rounding applaud for the lovable. Come on, let's give it up for the lovables, people. <laughs> Kathy, get it going now. Kathy's waiting for the Bulls brothers to make their way through the crowd and the level Bulls to come back again to position. The crowd says, bring on the Bulls. <laughs> well, these are hors d'oeuvres right now. like Don Knotts under that costume. <laughs> He's a little guy, too. Get on the mic and get warm. Back to back, punch the front door to the door. Everybody dance to the new sound. Rock and roll, soul to soul. I bring it on down from the bottom. You know, the low folks had their own little party the other night after the game, too. Oh, is that right? I think theirs is rocking the worst of the locker room. They're a nice bunch, young ladies. Come loose in your body to let me take control.
they just made that song up. Because I've never heard of that rap artist. You I've haven't? Heard them all. Oh, that's I've the tune all. there. <laughs> play that beat? No? I've never heard that one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Five minutes more for a week. That's right. Remember that. And now a big Chicago welcome for the Bulls brothers. Bacon Elwood. I thought it was a bad omen, Jim, when the Bulls brothers missed the stuff at the game on Sunday night. I figured that meant the Bulls were going to lose. Fortunately, it didn't happen that way. You know, most of the time they miss the, bill, the Bulls win. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. They've been making them all through the playoffs, though. Is that right? Stuffs, yeah. <laughs> Time appearances. Oh, God bless them. I'm glad they're making a good living. Hey, they were there early on. Yeah. Now they're cashing in. The number 23 is to pass the number 34 in this town. such a striking resemblance to the guys who were in the movie to uh, Dan Aykroyd yeah, wonder, and John Belushi. I wonder if they have to pay royalties to Aykroyd and Belushi. Good question. By now, it probably doesn't matter. The estate, I mean. <laughs> Let's have a big welcome to the Well, now, Chuck band. has a very close-up view of all this. Chuck, what are you seeing down there? Yeah, it's uh, quite a view from down in front, Diane, I'll tell you that. Mayor Daly has been backstage here for about 45 minutes, and I think... I think only the Chicago Bulls could keep the mayor of Chicago waiting for 45 minutes, but uh, he's got a lot of company out here waiting for the Bulls to uh, come out on stage, don't you think? I have to say, George Went must have the most unbelievable PR person in the world. He has been at every Chicago sports event forever. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about uh, Sunday, shall we? Yes, Sunday. As we know, Sunday was an unforgettable day in Chicago sports history. That's right. We feel the exact same way. Danny Jackson finally won a game in Wrigley Field. That's right. That's right. And of course, needless to say, we saw the inevitable coronation, or should I say re-coronation, of a certain team known as... The Ball. Thank you so much. Faith accompli, my friend. Now, we have a telegram here. Uh, you got a the, telegram. Yeah, from the city of Chicago to the city of Portland. It reads simply, na, 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 na. Hey, hey, goodbye, goodbye my, my friend. friend. Portland eating salmon, my friend. That's right. And I, and I thought this was supposed to be brain food. No. I guess not. They're going to try some pork chops. They're going to try some brain food next time. Now, the series was a little bit closer than we predicted, you know? That's right. Our prediction was the Bulls in three. They could have done that. That's all. 
A shot here, here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's a momentum here. thing. Still, it was a great night. The only downer, the only downer, the only problem was all that looting and rioting. And, and you know. Yeah, let's talk for a moment here. Yeah. That was a shame. Oh, yeah. The it's, looting and rioting. It's not Chicago, my no way. friends. We think it's a Man, damn shame. It's like some kind of New York cesspool or something. It's not Chicago. We're nice people. We think it's a damn shame that in a city of three million people, you got those two million jerks to ruin it for the other million. That's right. We're gonna do a song here. We got a little tune for you. Yeah, we got an audience participation part. The rules are this. When we sing the balls, you sing the balls. All right? <laughs> Mr. Music, if you please. This doesn't ring true to rap Portland, though, because that was a really nice town and really yeah. nice people. Oh, yep, a lot less fun beating them than Detroit.
the stage now come the Bulls led by their assistant coaches. Jim Clemens, Johnny Box, Tex Winner. And here it is, the Bulls wedding song. Aren't the lights supposed to go off? <laughs> Most explosive introduction in sports history. No Not far about. none, nobody's topped it, nobody's come close. For some people, it's their favorite part of the game. Yep. <laughs> the entire lineup! what he wanted to get onto the court to win those two championships. You know something, Tim? Defense. Jerry Reinsdorf told me New York-style Nick defense, and that's what Bill Jackson brought to this team. You know, Johnny's pretty good at this uh, intro stuff. Let me introduce now the general manager of this great club, Jerry Coach. Unaffectionately, they call him crumbs from time to time, but people should have more respect for this man. To the world's greatest fans, the second time we're here. And it's more satisfying than the first time. And it's beautiful, and it's all for you. Thank you. 
Well, that's not entirely true. I mean, the fans are glad to accept some of it, but the money goes to the players. That's right. <laughs> and now, yeah, they just want some the tickets. And <laughs> the coach in the playoffs, Coach Bill Jackson. Twice tonight, is it not? <laughs> he sounds like Bill, doesn't he? Start right. <laughs> I must introduce the coaching staff that's worked so many hours with me and seen it behind. Jim Clemens, a defensive specialist. Johnny Bob. Ace of Spades, there Next it is. Next winner. <laughs> the calling card. And the weight conditioning uh, coaches. Al Vermeil, his assistant, Eric Helen. Thank you very much. I wish all the politicians would keep their speeches short and sweet like this. singing the same thing. <laughs> and the man who brought us through so many nicks and bruises during this season, our trainer, Chip Schaefer. Yes, indeed. That's right. other people here who should be recognized they're behind the scenes and they do tremendous jobs and bring you people helping bringing you people of players that make this franchise jimmy stack one of the fine scouts in professional basketball clarence gaines jr who is not here right now he's with a prospect coming into town and he's outstanding too and my left arm who's down here is Karen Stack, who does a tremendous job for this organization. Jim Thank Stack's you very sister. much. Yep. We hope to be here a third time. Thank you. Hold oh, the plate in Northwestern. Well, I guess that's official now, Tim. Three feet. <laughs> He's for <laughs> the third time. All right, we're going to do what we did last year. We're going to, would you like to hear from the players? <laughs> is Chicago a great town? I mean, of course kind of sure we want to hear from the players, here. Johnny. <laughs> the only equipment is here also. Johnny Legmanowski. Johnny. All right, let's let's uh, let's get them up here to the mic and uh, see if they've got something to say. How about uh, we'll start with the guy that made some mega blocks, the Terminator, Scotty Williams. The Terminator, I like that. Get some t-shirts made up for that. After Scott, there's going to be Bobby, Stacey, DJ, Cliff, Will, Craig, Horace, Bill, John, Scotty Pippen, and then, of course, Michael Jordan. Hello, Chicago. How's it feel? I just want to say thank you for cheering us on to victory in that fourth quarter. Without you guys, we knew we had a whole city behind us. The stadium was rocking. It really made it happen for us. I'm not going to talk about the three P because Horace Grant always tells me that I don't know what I'm talking about anyway. <laughs> but I will say one thing: real men do it twice. Real men do it thrice. Thrice. Go I for like it. All right, you all know the Bulls were down by 15 starting the fourth quarter, but let's hear it from the guy that had the three that got it going, Buddy Hanson. Okay, it's so nice for him to be in this situation and for him to to, to hey, bring Chicago. the tribute. We love her. This is great the first time, Scotty. I guess I ain't a real man until I come back and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you but, got uh, that right, Scotty. Uh, these guys accepting me and the coaching staff and Jerry Krause and the organization, allowing me to come here and be a part of their team, the world championship championship team of last year. Want to thank them. Thank you, the fans of Chicago, the greatest city in the world. A guy that played a pivotal role also in the fourth quarter, quarter comeback. comeback. That's it for Stacey King, King, eh? Hey. to hear the cheers this year instead of the jeers. i like to say thank you for the fans who cheer for us all year long. We've been through a lot of adversity this year as a team. Uh, we hung in there real tight and we won. <clears throat> as you know, I like to do Bill Cartwright's voice. <laughs> I've retired from doing Bill's voice as of today. This is the last time you'll hear it. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's been really great. Thank you. And by the way, I'm not finished. Not. <laughs> <laughs> the king man. All right, we got a guy that 
Hit a nice jumper in that fourth quarter. They call him the kid, B.J. Armstrong. I want to say, uh, the first time we did it, it was just an incredible feeling for all the fans and all the people in the city of Chicago to share in this moment in victory. And for us to do it again twice has been a remarkable achievement by the team and by you guys for supporting us all year. Just want to say thank you. Hope we can be here again next year. God bless all of you. Thanks a lot. Last year, Jerry Krause find a, found a free agent and brought him here. We thought it was good news. Let's hear it for good news. Cliff Levingston. Uh, he's always got a smile on his face, too. Well, we're here again, and um, it's been a great ride. It's been a roller coaster ride all year. Through all the adversity we overcame, with all the things everybody was saying about us, didn't think we could do it again, but... Uh, we proved everybody wrong. We're here. We got one more ring. I just want to say thanks to the, the, the fans of Chicago. You guys are the best fans that uh, anybody could ever have behind them. I don't think without you guys it would have been possible to push us through that last game. You guys gave us the energy that we needed to get over the hump. And I just say thank you. And the party is at the Good News Riviera. He didn't say when. <laughs> well, it's, it's right after this parade that there's the pluggers all over the poles there. Lost a couple games in the playoffs. Who kept our spirits up? Mr. 900 number, Will Perdue. <laughs> now, you know something prophetic is going to come from his lips. All right. I got two things to say. All right. The first time was neat. The second time was one heck of a feat. This time, I had one hell of a seat. <laughs> <laughs> and all he has to do now is say it's time for the read the three P. The third time will be oh so sweet. He's buying. <laughs> <laughs> They're all hot tonight. Ooh, boy. A local product, a long-range threat always, the three-point champion of the NBA, Craig Hodges. His nickname is Sparky because when he comes off the bench, he's a spark plug. I want to thank Almighty God for blessing us with two championships. And last year I said it would be sweet to repeat. Now we say repeat, repeat will definitely be sweet. Well, you know, every team has a policeman when things get tough down in the lane. But the Bulls, they turn to the G-Man, Horace Grant. General, General Grant. All right, all right, all right. I would just like to salute all of my fans out there. As the general. <laughs> Without you guys in the fourth quarter, believe me, it probably would have been a game seven. But you guys cheered us on in the fourth quarter. The bench did a great job. Michael came in. Scotty held the team together out there. Thank you for your support. Well, this league has some of the fine centers, Patrick Ewing, Akeem Olajuwon, all those good guys. But we got a guy that's been the center on two years now on the championship team. Let's hear from the co-captain, Bill Cartwright. Of 
looking for two things. I'm looking out to see if I can see the end of this crowd. And I'm, almost, and I'm also looking for some 250-pound right-handers to go to Stacy's camp. <laughs> oh, Lord. Gotcha. Gotcha. Zinger. I just want to tell you, 67 home wins, two championships, 104 games this year. And here we are, right back here. We could have done it without you. We will be back. <laughs> Man. Mm -hmm. A guy that always comes up with the big game. They should start calling this guy the gamer, Johnny Paxson. Last year I talked about how nice it would be back here a year later. Well, here we are. We got our first one in 91, our second one in 92. Maybe our third 93. An all defensive team member, a member of your US Olympic team, a man with a lot of courage, a lot of talent, Scotty Tippett. Thank you, fans, here. Last season, it was great because we felt like that we did it as a team. But this year, I think this championship definitely belongs to you fans because you guys brought the best of us in the fourth quarter. Thank you very much. Let's go for a three-piece. You know, it only happened once. A player was named the NBA All-Star Most Valuable, uh, the NBA Season Most Valuable Player and followed it up by the Most Valuable Player in the playoffs. And our guy did it twice. Now here he is without his cape, Michael Jordan. Express today, I think it's very thrilling to play basketball here in the city of Chicago and to play in front of all these fans. Without you guys' support, there's no way we would have done it twice. Without you guys' support, there's no way we're going to be able to do it for the third time. And I'd like to say a special thanks to the organization, to the city of Chicago. Thank God you drafted me instead of Portland. to bring up Kathy Osterman, Executive Director of the Mayor's Office of Special Events for a presentation to Michael and the team. Michael, on behalf of the City of Chicago and all your fans, that's our banner designed for you and all the players. Let's give them another cheer. Very nice touch. Kathy, I'd like you to stay up here if you will. Kathy, I'd like to bring up the man that is responsible for all these fine things that are happening here to the Chicago Bulls again. Let me bring up Jerry Reinsdorf for a presentation of this World Championship trophy that will be displayed at City Hall so all the citizens of Chicago can view this as your players have. I'm kind of surprised we heard from George Went, but not from Mayor Daly. I have to lean down for the microphone. We may soon yet. These, this great team, this great coaching staff won the championship. They won it for you, the people of Chicago. 
and your trophy will be on display as soon as it's engraved at City Hall, so be sure you come by and see it. I think we've reached the end of the show here. Johnny Kerr holds up the three fingers the fans make for the exits, and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The end of the celebration at Grant Park for the Bulls defending world champions. Everybody says, why do you call them world champions? Because they only play in the United States. <laughs> yeah, Find like me another basketball team anywhere in the world that's going to beat these guys. How about getting an all-star team from all around the world to play the Bulls? They still lose. <laughs> All right, the city of Chicago has spoken. Well, we'll see uh, how long it takes the Bulls to get out of here. <laughs> Next thing left for uh, two members of the Chicago Bulls, Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan, will be the Olympics in Barcelona. And they leave in what? This weekend? They this leave weekend. this uh, Saturday, Sunday, for uh, San Diego for uh, some practice uh, trials and whatever. And, and then they... Uh, go up to Portland for the America's uh, Games, as they call them, where they will have 10 teams from around the world that are in this zone, the uh, North American zone, and they will play uh, for the four spots that will go to Barcelona for the Olympic Games. Well, you it was know, a wonderful day. I'm glad, I'm glad that we were able to be a part of it, and I'm glad you were able to be mm -hmm. a part of it, too, with us on television. If you couldn't be down here in person, it was really spectacular. It was. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I saw every single angle on TV. Yeah. All right, Eyewitness News at 4, 5, 6, and 10. We'll, of course, have lots of other vignettes from today's activities. But in the meantime, we're going to join all my children in progress and hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye, Thanks everybody. Thanks for joining us, everybody. See you, folks. These Asian gangsters have chosen a...